Just looking at the HD version on Dracula. It's still got that same sort of, sort of like, kind of like distorted sort of sound. I thought it was, uh, you know, but it's, it's on this version as well. On this press, on this release. I can hear it just there, there, sort of kind of, kind of sort of edgy, subtle distortion sound, but it doesn't bother me. That's a kind of laser effect, that, with smoke. Um, that effect has been probably used in Star Trek Motion Picture, um, Final Countdown. Uh, octopusy, I think. <coughs> maybe, maybe a few other films that I probably not noticed. I think it, it still has a kind of tone, a sort of, hang on, I wonder if this still sounds the same when it pans over. Yeah, almost similar to the laser disc. Amazing. Um, because it's only a Dolby Stereo um, version, 424. Still looks like it has this sort of desire, uh, kind of pale sort of colour. Sorry, no one allowed on board. I've business on board. What sort of business? I'm solicitor, Jonathan Parker, and I've been on the road all night from Jonathan. London. It's all right, let him pass. Right, dialogue pan Carry up on. there. Maybe okay, another dialogue pan over to the stage I'm right uh, 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 later. <laughs> nice bit of voicing around. The man we represented in the purchase of you know, Carfax Abbey. Other people Cut moving around, course. voicing and motion That's sound. Stupid on me. I is he, is he safe? I've got in all this game. Who? Dracula. Oh, yes, he's the only one who is. Young Mina found him on the beach last night and we took him to Carfax. As for the rest of the crew, look. Chip's love will tell us. Right, swing him across, Harry. Excuse me, is all this cargo that counts? Well, there's more down below, but the rest of the crates broke up on them rocks. Filled up with some kind of dirt. Dirt? What for? Whatever it is, I'll take it. I'll put it on me wagon. You can't do that, Renfield. The Count's not here to sign for him, and they stay here until he comes round himself. I'm sorry, Harbour Master, but the rights of the ship owner are already completely sacrificed since the tiller of this vessel is held in a dead hand. Now, where's the rest of Dracula's baggage? I'd like to inspect that as well. Come this way. Oh, God. You sold me house right out from under me, and you sold that poor old count a right bill of goods with your fancy silver tongue. Renfield. I've half a mind to tell Dracula he'd been took good. Mr. Renfield, I wonder if I could impose a... It's a little bit more colourful, but I think this might be a slightly enhanced version. Because it looks a bit... At my home. It just kind of looks a fraction, sort of the uh, kind of desaturated of colour a little bit. In I... Uh, had the colour sort of like turned up quite a bit. Um, I'm not sure where the colour settings, colour settings are on this. Um, let's see where the. Yeah, this one's set at about forty percent, uh, or forty whatever. I think um, I think it's the same mode setting I used when I was a. Uh, Using on the laser disc, um, but it seems, seems like it's just uh, got a bit, bit more tone color in it. I mean, I could see the idea of kind of like making it look a bit pale and sort of like kind of blasting, 
almost like a classic black and white sort of um, um, Dracula movie. It's like, it's like this thing here. It doesn't have too much colour in the lace of this. It's kind of very palish. Well, that's roughly where... That's the laser disc. And, mm, it's just a... It's just a fraction. But then... The other version could be... It could be the... Um... um I mean, detail is not too bad. It does have a slight problem there. I can see where, you know, because the imaging, and I'll see a bit of chroma or in rainbow around the uh, the hat there because of the complexity of the patterning on the, the straw hat. Um, between certain angles, yeah, you can almost see detail and such. Um, um, Yeah, it just looks a bit kind of pale there, suddenly. It's very kind of, it's had like a very mildish there. And it cuts to the next scene and it sort of goes kind of very pale. Um, let's see where the colour setting should be, around about 40. Uh-huh. Okay, that's Turn, take it right up. I'll take it right up. Quite that's that's at the top. That's at the top. Yeah, still got, you know, I can still see even in certain distant positions. I can see cobwebs. I can see hair. You know, fine fine. Uh, Fine hair as such. I mean, blimey, it's not like you know. I can't see it. You know? There's only a few resolutions down from 4K or something. <laughs> um, so I'll just go back. Um, there's the color and color and color and color. Take that back down to whoopsies. Turn it right back down. Down there. I'll leave it at that 41. I'm going to not split hairs on that. So that's the, the, uh, the, the HD version again. You know, looking around the hat, the straw hat, and you know, the patterning there, it, it stays all very stable. It doesn't kind of like make any strange um, uh, flicker effect. And yeah, it's just a little bit of tone of colour there and such. And when it cuts to the next scene, it'll still kind of maintain a bit of colour there, see. Um, shades of tint of blue in the background, very faint greens and such and you know it's got those sort of tones so that with the sun um, near the uh, the end those sort of bright colours on the sun. And I'll just take the colour down a bit on this. So it looks like so that's down at 26. You know, don't usually have it that low, and yeah, I can still see like a color. Uh, but if um, hold it there and just take the color up, 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 up. Oh, now, now it's now, now, they look, now they look like they're boiling bloody. Um, Lobsters in a pot. Um, you know what I mean. Is that some flicker I'm starting to see on there? I don't know where that. Hmm. It's picking up flicker. Must be the frame rate I got on the. Uh, just so. Uh, 
I sort of vaguely recall uh, looking at a load of OLEDs recently in a store, and there was so much flicker on them. Mm, I must have the frame rate different on this camera, so yeah, the cameras can register flicker there. So you see a little strobe effect. Oh, try it there. Still, still give it a kind of like. You know, and you've got the. Uh, I never saw it 35 mil at the cinema, so a film like this would have been X rated at the time. X or R rated. It still sounds the same to the laser disc. Of course you've got the options of analog audio and the uh, PCM and there are slight differences between the, the two in the way the sound is modulating on the analog to where how it's uh, modulating on the uh, pulse code modulation. I can still hear that kind of, you know, distortion. So I think everything is there, sort of thing. The um, boom, boom, boom. I can still feel the bass, but yeah, it sort of seems the same. If I had to do a, had to do a rigorous test or check in with the. Um, Spectrum lab um, and getting the levels, uh, getting the levels uh, to be all. Oh, that doesn't look right there. Something, something there on the sails. It looks a little bit iffy there. I'm not sure what was going on there. Let me back that up. So a little bit iffy there. Back that up again, and I'll zoom in. And I'll go to the uh, laser disc. That that looks a bit like um, some heavy overdone um, on the um, the gamma. I'll be curious if I see the same blemish blemish marks or anything, but. I saw the same blemish. Yeah, right. Just about there. There's sort of like strange patch patches marks. It's difficult to get the yeah. It's difficult to get the light bloody uh, focus on the thing. Um, just back it up again. Pause the video set. Okay, so if I pause it and zoom in. Just where, around about here, where I'm pointing up here, if anyone's got this transfer or what, um, it, it, it looks heavy on the gamma. It doesn't look right. This doesn't look right. It looks processed digitally, really overdone. Um, put the laser disc on. Okay, that's the laser disc. And it's coming around at the angle. 
I can see I can see it like there's a shadowing or of such, but on the uh, the other transfer it it looks look it looked patchy. It looked like. You know the um, whatever levels. You know it's not like it's got it's totally bad transfer. You know you got to really keep your eye on these things if you're doing something to get it like to looking like film film. So you, you pinch yourself and you think, wow, I can still see scratch marks and things like you know, and dirt and such, and it still looks like I'm watching film. And you could just play it over and over and over, and it ain't gonna wear, it ain't gonna stretch, bend, or. It's going to get melted in the uh, the film gate if it gets jammed. Um, the only the only thing that happens is the disc gets scratched in a certain way and it just won't play on a certain player. Then you've got to buy another player just so the disc will play, if you know what I mean. Um, if it's really bad scratch, it just won't play, period. Then you've got to buy another um, another pressing. Um, but, you know, this is uh, the laser disc. <clears throat> So it just, I don't know, it doesn't look as distracting there. It doesn't look as distracting as it did on the, because, you know, I know what to look for. And then suddenly I could see something that just looks a bit, whoa, a bit out of place. Um, go back to the, uh, the uh, HD. So it looks distracting there on the HD. Who's doing the transfers? I don't know. It's got a, a sort of degree of grain or something I can see moving around. And that image is blown up to about the same as what the op would have on the laser disc, even though it's, um, you've got to expand the, uh, it looks like I've got, there's a smudge mark there on the film print, I can see. A smudge mark. That's interesting. Let me go back. Let me have a go back and have a look at that there again. I saw a nice little smudge mark. As well as little bits of dirt in certain areas. That I can see a bit of dirt up there. It's just not moving around too much. that smudge mark there right about there you see a smudge mark so when these credits come up okay let me go back to the laser there. so that's the laser disc again just see a very faint smudge mark so but it's very faint what about the other scratch marks I can see here yeah a nice little scratch mark over there yeah there yeah gotcha that's it Yeah, nice little scratch mark there. I wonder if it's on the um, so just before those credits. Mark down there on the bottom of the screen. Um, 
could be where the um, the film's been patched together and you know splicing, splicing and such. But I don't see the same scratch mark coming up. It's either it's been digitally removed or um, yeah. This air I can see. Well, 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 that is some bloody digital. Right up here in the corner. Zoom in. See if it comes up on the camera. There. See that? What the heck is going on there, I would say. It's like some sort of fringing effect. Um, I don't know what's going on there, but let's go back to the laser disc. No, I'm not seeing it on this. I'm not seeing it on the laser disc. But it was a pretty bad, um, pretty bad. Oh, hang on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Stop the music. Hold on. Because this is low def, I can see something very faint, but it's not, because it hasn't got the high definition for such, but I can see something kind of circularating around up in this top corner. Up here I can see something just, oh it's, it's very subtle. So I'm curious about the transfer, I mean where where the transfer has originated for the Blu-ray. Where where where's its origin? Where's its source? Because it's like whatever they done many years ago, um I'm not sure what year this was released on Laserdisc, um probably early nineties. Probably early nineties. Um now that is a that is that sort of noise effect that I pointed out. You shouldn't see that because that's that's a video artifact noise. You shouldn't see it. You wouldn't see it on actual film. It just wouldn't be there. That's due to some process of the telecine or something. Anyway. <laughs> 